get up here before she gets too carried away. <laughs> but Robert Bettina did say earlier that uh, we have to be careful that consciousness can get in our way. And so I guess that explains why Stephen typically sleeps through my talks. <laughs> doesn't want that consciousness getting in his way. <laughs> and he told me that today was going to be about happiness. Um, and unfortunately, I can't talk about that. Because <laughs> this is the end of the world. <laughs> but we know that. Um, the Mayans, uh, the, over a thousand years ago, predicted that... Uh, I'm not quite sure how they did that. Uh, I mean, they didn't invent cars or anything, but apparently they knew when the end of the world was coming. Uh, 5,125 year cycle ends December 21st. So, We're sorry. Not sure. <laughs> I'm not going to have to buy Christmas presents. <laughs> you know, those of us who are more advanced, though, I mean, realize it's not really the end of the world. It's just a total change in everything. The, the Mayans were able to predict that, that everything will change. December 20th, I guess we'll all be kind of the regular slobs we are. <laughs> and December 21st, we will be enlightened. <laughs> I just, you have to hope that they're better at it than other people have. Because... The end of the world's been predicted for a long time. Uh, there was a clay tablet found from the Assyrians 2800 BC, 2800 years before Christ, and its translation says, uh, people are so corrupt that the world is about to end. <laughs> They're just off by a few thousand years. <laughs> Then uh, the Romans, many of the Romans were very upset because Romulus, one of the brothers who founded Rome, uh, saw 12 eagles. I mean, obviously that's a problem. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, they determined that that meant that each eagle stood for 10 years so that 10 years after the founding of Rome, then Rome and all civilization would be destroyed. So there was little difficulty calculating that. They didn't have an actual date, but uh, somewhere a couple hundred years before the birth of Christ, uh, everything was supposed to end then, of course. Jesus said that the kingdom of God will come before some of those who were living right then passed away. And so there were a lot of people there very nervous about uh, the end of the world as we know it. Um, and there was one instance of a, a man whose wife uh, passed away and he was very upset because he didn't know how that would affect it. You know, the, the Messiah was going to come down and set everything right, but if she was already dead, she w he was afraid she wouldn't participate in that. So, so this has been going on for quite a while. I want to I have to have some notes on this because there are some, some good ones. I, I wanted to note, though, there's a website called A Brief History of the Apocalypse. <laughs> and it tells about a lot of this from about uh, a few hundred years after uh, the birth of Jesus um, to now there were well over 350 prophecies of the end of the world listed. Uh, the year 1999 had 35 of them, and the year 2000 had to settle for 29. <laughs> uh, and, and some people got good at it. There was a group called the, the Jockites. They had three <coughs> different dates predicted before they gave up. Uh, <laughs> the Millerites, and then... Some of the Millerites became the second Adventists. They, they each had four different dates uh, where they predicted the end of the world. There was an Anglican priest, Michael Baxter, and he got six different dates that he predicted. And the Jehovah's Witnesses had six different dates. I mean, you have to admire persistence. <laughs> you miss the first time... Recalculate. <laughs> uh, the end of the world 
was predicted by the Mormons. It was pre predicted by Billy Graham uh, and by Reverend Moon. Uh, somebody's got to be right eventually. <laughs> but some of the more interesting ones, in about 500 AD, the calculations were made that that was 6,000 years after the creation of the world. So that's when it would end. I'm not sure why 6,000 years. Uh, there were some people who computed this, <laughs> extensive mathematical computations, that Friday, March 25th of the year 970, the Annunciation and Good Friday both fell on that day. Now, according to these people, that was also the day that Adam was created, the day that Isaac was uh, almost sacrificed, the day, the day the Red Sea was parted, the day that Jesus was conceived, and that Jesus was crucified, all on March 25th. And so that was going to be the end of the world. They got into a lot. Now, the end of the world was also predict well, not the end of the world, but, but a huge flood that was going to come back. Uh, and it was going to start in London on February 1st of 1524, and over 20,000 of the, of the people abandoned their homes and fled out into the countryside. And in fact, uh, one clergyman uh, built a fortress that he stocked with food and water. Uh, in the book that he wrote, Christopher Columbus wrote the Book of Prophecies. And he said that the world was created in 5,343 B.C. But instead of being destroyed in six years, he gave it seven, or 6,000, 7,000 years. And so it was going to be destroyed in 1658. Now, he's a little smarter because obviously he wasn't going to be around in 1658. <laughs> So if you're going to predict, it's better not to be there. Uh, in New England, in May 1970, all of the, the sky became dark, and, and people decided that that was the prophecy of the end of days. It was actually a large-scale forest fire that had caused it. In 1795, uh, there was a retired English sailor, Richard Brothers, who called himself... God's almighty nephew. <laughs> he's not the son of God, but he's his nephew. Uh, he also told him, or he also uh, said that he was to lead the ten lost tribes of Israel, and he was to become the king of England, uh, and that uh, the end of the world, or in effect the new, the new age, would come between 1793 and 1795. Not quite specific. He was put in in a state asylum. <laughs> um, and there's many of these. The founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley, predicted that uh, in 1836, the beast of Revelation was to rise from the sea, and that would be the beginning of the end of the world. Um, the Millerites, I mentioned them earlier, that on October 27, 1844, Jesus was coming back for the great event, and they all gathered on a hill to await him. And, and when he didn't come, that event was known as the Great Disappointment. <laughs> I'm not sure if they were disappointed in Jesus or in whoever made the prediction, but they were disappointed in somebody about this. Uh, and again, at the end,